Hi everyone, the Lethbridge Hurricanes are going to be doing a lot of scoreboard watching over the next couple of days as they prepare for the Prince George Cougars on Saturday. The Canes woke up this morning in the eighth and final playoff spot in the East. The players we spoke to today say it seems like everyone in the conference seems to be coming on really strong right now and they need to start making a push of their own. The Tigers and Ice are both in action tonight and both of those teams have games in hand on the Canes. Yeah, a lot of teams got a game games in hand, so we're just kind of sitting back and watching. But uh, uh, we got to make the most of the geese, these games coming up. That's for sure. You just say the playoffs have already started. I mean, 13 games left. We got to just control what we can control. We can't worry about what other teams are doing if they're winning or if they're losing. We got nine of the last 13 games are in our division. Eight of them are teams that we're in a race with. So it's up to us. If we win those head-to-heads, we'll be fine. Mm. <laughs> it's definitely crunch time every. Every game is an opportunity for a big two points that uh, ultimately uh, we control our own destiny, which is nice, but, you know, uh, they're all pretty big down the stretch here. Hurricane Watch, sponsored by Lialta Building Supplies, for all your home building and renovating needs. And as I mentioned, the Canes host Prince George on Saturday, and every point is going to be crucial for the remainder of this season. Now, one team that is still on the outside looking in as far as the Eastern Conference playoff race is concerned is the Kootenai Ice. They sit in ninth place, five points back of the Canes and Tigers. Kootenai hosts Victoria tonight. The Royals, by the way, have won five in a row. The Tigers are in Brandon this evening, taking on the last place Wheat Kings. Last night, they played in Regina against the lowly Pats. We'll pick things up in the first period with the Pats coming out with a purpose. Just 51 seconds in, Carson Samaridney put Regina on the board, giving them an early lead, but it sure didn't last long. Four minutes later, Tigers on the rush. Elgin Pierce decided to keep the puck and shoot. <laughs> That's a good decision. His 24th of the season ties things up at one. Before the break, Tigers on one of their eight power plays. The Pats were very undisciplined last night. Boston Lear made the pay that time. Two to one Tigers after one period. Pats played the physical card in this contest. Morgan Klimchuk proving his shot isn't the only thing to watch out for. I'll explain later. To the third period, you'd think sniper Hunter Shinkarik would draw some extra attention for the Pats D. And not this time. He walked right out front and scored his 31st. But Regina was down 3 to 1 in Brandon recently and came back and they tried to do the same thing last night. Mark McCoy with an absolute laser beam to make it. 3-2, then just 40 seconds later, remember Morgan Klimchuk? This time he hit the Tigers where it hurts most on the score sheet. We've got ourselves a tie game at three now, but hold on. Pats let up defensively for just one brief moment, and the Tigers pounced. Jacob Doty made a 4-3 to three there. That was the final score. The Tigers sit seventh in the East now, tied with the Hurricanes with 59 points. To the National Hockey League, Dallas Stars up in Edmonton again last night. Check out Taylor Hall going solo, beating Kari Letton in glove side. Bit of a weak one there. 1-0 Oil after one period of play. In the second period, Stars tied it up on a weird one. Puck went off the glass behind Devin Dubnik and then off of his back and in. Brendan Dillon got credit, the rookie, with a second. It's 1-1 now to the third. Dallas took the lead when former flame Eric Nystrom's floater from near the blue line went off of Dubnik's mask and in. Rough game for Dubnik. It's 2-1 Stars. Then after the Stars killed off a penalty, Yarmer Jagger found the puck laying there in the slot and scored his 669th career goal. 3-1 Dallas there, 4-1 the final. Edmonton has dropped seven straight and two to Dallas in less than a week. The Stars are in Calgary tonight. Facing a wave of criticism from around the world, and rightly so, IOC President Jacques Rogue will meet with the head of wrestling's governing body to discuss ways the sport can fight to save its place in the Olympic Games. The IOC executive board proposed to drop wrestling from the program of the 2020 Summer Games on Tuesday, a decision which brought a sharp backlash from wrestling organizations and national Olympic bodies around the world, including Canada, the U.S., Russia, and Iran. I'd be so surprised if the decision gets held up and made a drop wrestling. Mm -hmm. I just can't see it. I can't see it either. Speaking of Olympics, where were you 25 years ago? Today? I was right here as a practicum student. Really? I was. Wow. I really was. I guess you don't want to hear I was in the sixth grade. Then, I do huh? not want to hear that, Alyssa. <laughs> I had one of those little torches. Enough. <laughs> It was a good time, and Heidi and Howdy came to my classroom. Still ahead on the CTV News at 5, some felines who need a home. Stick around and meet them.